In this video, I thought I would take you through the processes of preparing this logo to cut with a sign cutting plotter. Now this logo is not your everyday logo. It has a lot of fine points on it, and if you, particularly if you had to cut a lot of these, you might want to simplify the cutting process. So I'm going to talk you through that, and if you are a regular sign cutter, you'll enjoy the processes we're going to learn here. I'll also look at a couple of special effects. But first of all, I simply want to show you how I've laid this out. I'm going to double click on my page border to bring up my uh, options dialog box and I just want to show you that I've set my page size to 2000 millimeters by 800. I'll just drop that to inches so you can see what it would be in inches as well. Of course it's quite sizable, around about 2 meters long and just under a meter tall. Now what we need to do here is we need to really look at how can we begin to smooth this out or how can we simplify the sharp points here because our plotter is going to probably rip the vinyl a little bit in some of these areas but more particularly when we go to peel the excess vinyl away we're going to have some problems. Well the first thing we can do is select our shape tool click on the uh, logo and then control A on your keyboard that will automatically select all of the nodes. The first thing you'll notice is on the property bar reduce nodes becomes available. So you watch all the number of black squares and as we click reduce nodes you can actually see a number of them begin to disappear. So that's just stage one. We simply should do that by default. Let me zoom back out a little bit more. Now control Z I'll just undo that and you can see the extra nodes come back. Control Shift Z and I'll redo it and you can see a number of those nodes disappear. So it does make a significant difference, particularly when you need to now go ahead and edit some nodes. The next thing we can do, I'll zoom back out a little bit further, is again we need to Control A, select all of the nodes. We can begin to smooth this out somewhat. So alongside the Reduce Nodes button, we've got the Curve Smoothness option. Now, as you begin to move this, I'll start at 1 and I'll slowly move to the right. Notice the blue outline there. So really we're ultimately changing the shape of the object. So the more I try to smooth, well obviously the object just no longer looks correct. So you've got to find that place where you're close to your shape and I think that's probably about it there. There's not too much distortion. Let's move back. So uh, F4 to zoom back out to my object. And that still looks fairly right. I can see it's been smoothed out a little. If I control Z undo that, you can see it's a little bit more reggy. Uh, Shift Z to redo that. That is a little bit smoother. Those ridges are now gone. However, as I move in here and I look, this still is too jagged, but you can see it has been smoothed out just a little. What can we do about this? Well, I'm going to show you a really interesting process. I'll zoom back out. What we're going to do is we're going to apply an outline to this object. Then we're going to turn that outline into an object itself. And then we're going to use the outline of that to cut. So here we go. Okay, there's a number of steps to this process. So if you're following along, you may even want to write them down. Well, first of all, I'm going to select my logo and break it apart. I'm then going to remove the fill color and right click on a color so I have an outline. Now I'm doing this so that I can see all of the objects that are inside of another object. The reason for that, if I just select those there, I want to select them all individually and cut them to the clipboard. So I'll quickly go around each logo, or each area. Finger on the shift key and I'll select that one and that one there. Okay, there's one there. Now I need to select these because in a little while we're going to weld this object and anything inside of another object will disappear because it's being welded. Now Control X cuts to the clipboard so all of those pieces are now gone. Good. Control A selects everything. Let's recombine it together and we can even give it the orange color again. Well that's step one. Step two, I'll zoom in really close to the pointed area here so you can see the effect of this. I'm going to make the blue outline really thick. So we'll come down here and select the outline pen dialog box and we're going to select a line thickness of three millimeters. Now that's fairly thick. But here's what's important. 
we're going to choose rounded corners. Now when I choose this option and I click OK, can you see that the outline, every time it reaches a point or a corner, it's rounded. And that's the important part of this effect. So I'll zoom back out, F4 zooms to our object. What we're going to do is we're actually going to convert this blue outline to an independent object. So up to a range and down to convert outline to object. Now I can grab my orange original and put, put that up there. Don't worry about things like this. They're really unimportant for this particular effect. Let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to zoom in a little closer here and we're going to go up to view and wireframe. Wireframe allows you to just see a, literally a wireframe with no colors or fills etc etc. You can see how we've got an inside line and an outside line. Well that of course is because this was created from an outline. So that outline was originally in between these two lines as you can see. Well for sign cutting we certainly don't want the two lines. We really only want to keep the outside line. So how can we do that? So F4, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the logo and I'm first of all going to break it apart. And watch this, all we need to do is weld because everything that's inside of another object will disappear as part of the weld. So we click weld and look at that. Wasn't that easy. Now I'm going to paste back down from my clipboard those components that we cut away. Then all I'm going to do is select the whole thing and combine it back together and I'll go back to my normal enhanced mode so we can see color and there it is in fact I might even make it orange in color and let's zoom in and have a look at the effect well there you go look at those points they've all been nicely rounded you're going to have no problem picking the vinyl and your plotter is easily going to cut this out so that's a tremendous way of smoothing out a lot of dramatic ridges and points etc. Well I'm going to delete that, I'll zoom back out a little bit more and now I'm going to show you how to create a drop shadow effect for sign cutting. I'm going to show you how to create a, a quick drop shadow effect out of vinyl and we'll talk about some other things along the way. So select the logo plus on your keyboard and we're just going to move it up and to the left just a little bit, not too much. We can select the bottom one and choose a uh, suitable Pantone color gray. In fact, I might even move that back a little. Now we're going to use the top logo to cut away the bottom logo. Really, it doesn't look very nice when you lay vinyl over the top of vinyl. And that's oftentimes what we do. Print out a gray one, then print an orange one and just stick one on top of the other. Well, I don't want to do that. So select the top logo finger on the shift key, select the bottom one and we're going to use trim up here on the property bar. Now cut the orange one to the clipboard, control X. Now that itself is not a bad looking effect and you could really put a logo up that looks just like that. But what we're going to do is come up to effects and we're going to open the contour dialog box. The contour dialog box allows us to draw a line inside or outside of an existing uh, object. In fact, we can draw multiple lines. But right now, we want one step, meaning we're only going to draw one line. And I'm going to have an offset of, I think I'll go with three millimeters. So we have a reasonable distance between the two vinyls. So select my object, offset. We're going to the inside, not the outside, and click Apply. It sometimes can take a little while to calculate because there's a lot of lines involved in this process. Now as you can see that grey or that darker line you can see there is the, is the new line that's been drawn. In fact it makes me think that really we should be looking at maybe even 5 millimeters. Click apply. There we go and that distance is a little greater. Of course 5 millimeters is around about one fifth of an inch just to give you an idea. We'll zoom in here now, we need to select our object. It's almost a little bit like what we did earlier. If we come up to view and wireframe mode, again we can see we've got two lines. Select our object up to a range and break contour group apart. This time I want to select the outer line and just click delete on my keyboard and it will delete from everywhere. 
F4, I'll just pop this away, F4, and we'll go back to our normal view. Now, Control V, paste back down my original logo, and look at that. Can you see we've now got a gap between our drop shadow and our original logo? So it means we're not going to lay any vinyl over the top of itself. Well, of course, it would help to be able to line these two up. So a simple way of actually achieving that is to draw some little locator marks. And I like to oftentimes do these sorts of things manually. So I'll drag that down there, hit my space bar, and over there, space bar, and then there. Then I'll select each one of them. And what we'll do is combine them all together. And the reason I want to combine them rather than group them is because I'm going to use my eyedropper tool click on the grey and I only have to fill one of them and they will all fill with the same colour. Right click to get rid of the outline colour. Um, now, I'm going to copy that to the clipboard, Control C, and then I'm going to group those with my bottom grey logo. So we'll group that together, then Control V, paste back down, and of course I'll grab my eyedropper tool, select that, finger on the shift key, fill that one, and then we'll group that with the top logo and group. So as you can see, I'll move them apart. We've got a locator point. So what that means is when I print my gray out, the little locator will print with that. When I, uh, I should say cut, when I cut my orange one out, the little locators will be there. So all I have to do is line up the locators and of course my whole drop shadow and everything will fit together very nicely. The one last thing I want to highlight is the same in the same way that we used this contour and we contoured inside to create a gap, you can do the reverse. You can contour on the outside, add an additional one-fifth of an inch or five millimeters so that you're actually laying vinyl over the top of vinyl in a very fine line all the way around. And of course that uh, can help overcome the issue of shrinkage, something that some sign writers want to work with as well.